so previously I talked through a, a, a kind of a ideal world scenario, like the simplest possible um, version of this in the in the, the demo in from the um, npm packages documentation. It gets a bit more complicated when you you come to put this into an actual website and you know do it in practice. Um, not that complicated. It's just as if there's a few things, a few nuances that are worth noting. Um, I own and run um, my own conversion agency, which you'll probably be either watching this on YouTube or in the blog, so you'll either know or you won't. Um, but the advantage of that is it gives me a website to play with. So this is the live site. This is my staging environment. Um, so what I've done is I've implemented um, <clears throat> a server-side test um, on my actual live or staging site. Um, I've already completed it, so I'm not going to go through it step by step in terms of me um, implementing it, but it's probably worth just running through um, how it works. So previously, um, all the code that we uh, had in the demo all lived inside that I think I called the file tar target server.js. Um, now, in your real application, um, it's unlikely that um, it will live there. It's most likely going to live in a root rather than living um, in the application itself. So nothing actually goes in the um, app.js. Everything lives in, in, in the root. So in my case, for my website, for my agency website, that there is some pretty simple root setup for thank you or contact or index. Um, so what I've essentially done is, is created a new root for um, uh, for forward slash AB test. Now, it's just a replication of um, my homepage. So my homepage, the roots are pretty simple. It just, it, it gets, if someone goes to, you know, the forward slash root, uh, it'll just render the index and the index is a pug template. Um, if you know what Pug is, great. If you don't, it's a templating engine that basically this will compile into HTML uh, on the back end, but it allows you to use kind of variables and, and such like. Um, the way I go about doing this is always a duplication of a template. So the reason that is, is if target fails, I don't want to... In the test that I'm doing here, this is this is the duplication. Um, I'm replacing um, the content here, which is h1.intro uh, title, which is which is this, which is this main copy here. Um, so this this main copy I'm replacing in this test. Now the reason I don't do it in index.pug is if target fails, nothing will go there because I'll have overridden the default content. So I leave the, the original index.pug and I create a duplication of it. Then in the root itself up here, in the error handler, which I spoke about earlier, um, which is here, basically, if there's an error with target, I just render the normal homepage. I don't do anything clever. It just is a safeguard. Hence, creating index and index.2. And now index.2 here is what's identical to index uh, one or just index, but rather than the content being hard coded like it is here, it's actually a variable which is um, pound sign content. Now, don't worry about the variable too much if you don't know about pub, but this is just essentially how you declare um, an unescaped variable. Now, that content is being passed in to this template from the root. Um, so all this content here, all the way down, is exactly what was exactly what was in the demo, which I went through earlier. The only thing that changes is you need a way of passing the content into a templating engine, or um, if you're using a single page app uh, framework like a Node or an Angular, some way of, of storing it. Now the way it's done here is I render index two, so basically. 
goes through all what it needs to do. And note this time there is no template, which there was in the previous um, demo, because the template is my actual page, which doesn't actually live here. But it goes through everything it needs to do. It creates the payload. Um, it gets a response from, uh, from target. Um, and then I assign three variables, which is the org ID, the visitor state, and the content, which is exactly the same as before. Cookie is saved, but this time on success, I don't render the template. I, um, I don't send the template like it does in the, um, in the previous demo. I fire a render um, and I render index two, which is my testing copy of index. And I pass in the org ID, the visitor state, and the content, those three things. So then when the forward slash AB test route runs, it will actually um, in here, it will replace org ID with a correct org, org ID, which is passed in. The service state will be passed in the service state object and the content will be whatever is returned from the server, which could be experience A or experience B. If it fails, if target fails, timeout or, or server down, something like that, it will default back to the normal index.pug and just, just show my homepage. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to show this on my local. So if I just um, navigate to this on my local, by the time this gets on my blog, it will be in the staging environment. That staging URL, staging.optosites.com, is actually publicly accessible. Um, so feel free to have a look at the implementation there. Um, but I'm going to navigate to this and I'm going to um, npm start. And this is just going to run my, um, my company website on my local which is just exactly like what you can see here. That didn't work, why didn't it work? Uh, it's on port 3001, not port 3000, I believe. So this will now render, um, at this point nothing's happening because, you know, um, this is just uh, the home page. But if we go to the root, forward slash AB test, it will render this exact page <clears throat> but it's rendered, this is a client side that headline from Adobe Target. Now, the reason it says this is a client side headline from Adobe Target um, is because there is one thing I want to make everyone aware of is that client side will work with server side, but it, can, it will override it. So here, I have a separate test set up called client side override. It's just one thing to be aware of that um, anything that the server returns, once the browser renders it, it's fair game to, for the Adobe target um, client side interface or the form editor to then manipulate. So it's something to be aware of that that can happen. Um, so what I will do here is actually just quickly edit this and I will just change this quickly just so it won't fire anymore. I could just pause it, but with caching, um, with caching it might take a while for me to actually get out of the test, so probably the best way of doing it is just to make myself not in the audience. Let that sink. Um, so what was actually happening there is, um, I don't know if it actually captured it in here. I haven't got inbox trace on, I don't think. Um, I haven't. But what was actually happening there is that the server side test was running and then being overridden by the, uh, the client side test. Um, so this is now um, worked. So, in theory, um, if I go back here now and just reload, you should get, there you go. So now this is a server side uh, headline from Adobe Target, which is being returned not by the override, but it's being returned by the server side testing. And it's just basically this content here. Now, what's worth mentioning is this doesn't have to be HTML, this could be a huge JSON file that you could just put loads of, you know, 
object in there and you could just be picking them out left, right and centre to manipulate a page or be changing an algorithm or pricing or personalise or this is a very basic example and to be honest this example probably would be better off doing well, would be better doing client side but it's just for demonstration purposes um, so okay so now we've got our test here let's just go into our debugger and clear everything off and have a look what happens so as I mentioned previously ideal world um, let's clear these target analytics and the server side instance that is in the head in here all match the SDID and if they do it'll be sending the data across as one visit and happy days so let me just find this so you'll see here this will change when I refresh so let's just do that again so work from this way forward so we've got target firing the SDID supplementary data ID ends in A01 for analytics it ends in A01 and then for uh, my actual site in terms of server side it ends in one. It ends in A01 and it's, it says here supplemental data ID consumed with the payload of server side test one, which is server test one, which is exactly what we've used. So that's creating um, essentially um, a merged visit across the server side and the client side, which is what we want. Now, when you first call or when I first called this get instance um, up here, um, it created um, a problem where it stopped my analytics in launch firing. So I am still implementing app measurement and the visit to API service, not target, but just the app measurement, which is the analytics and the visit to API. Um, I'm still doing that manually in from my um, public folder. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because what happens when you get to your actual main site and you try and do it all through and launch is that the this visitor get instance needs to fire really early and depending on the sequence of firing um, visitor is not created by so let me just quickly go into launch because it'll make more sense so um, oh, apologies so in launch I have the experience cloud ID service or whatever whatever it's called these days um, I have it. Um, I have it implemented, so it, it theoretically you you shouldn't have to manually trigger the visitor API service from the public folder, um, but you do. And the reason you have to do that is because if you go to extensions, it's here. This is the visitor 4.3, and I also have it here. Now the reason it's called here is because when this visit the doc get instance is called, which has to be called right at the top of the page, the visitor object doesn't exist yet because launch basically doesn't fire it quick enough. Um, so you have to manually invoke it here. So that's the reason it exists. Um, and that's the reason why I've also got, I also manually trigger the app measurement at the bottom um, just to make sure it fires in the correct sequence. Um, you probably don't actually need to do that. You can probably take this app measurement one out and just do it in um, in launch or DTM, providing you've got triggers, the correct timing triggers set up. Um, but beware there is a nuance that you just need to make sure that these are all firing in the correct order at the right time. If they don't, um, what you'll find is, is most likely analytics and target will have the same SDID, but it won't be the SDID that's being consumed uh, from your visitor.get instance call earlier on. Um, and that is essentially it for a very simple, I know it's quite gone on for quite a while, but it's a relatively relatively simple view of, of how this works. Um, there is much, much more you can do with this. This is a scratching the surface. Um, but when I was looking at documentation for this, that um, there wasn't much. There was only the actual target documentation, not many walkthroughs, and I think a visual representation of this is is easier to follow than just the, the documentation. Um, I went through my LinkedIn um, earlier on um, in the first part of this video. 
If you have any questions, I don't have a question section on my blog. Um, there probably will be on um, on uh, YouTube. But the easiest way is if you're trying to connect with me on uh, LinkedIn and just fire me any questions you may have, whether there needs to be some clarification or whether there needs to be um, some form of... Uh, additional follow up video for, for you know something that you guys may need just just drop me a message and I'll I'll get on that uh, as soon as I can I'll leave this LinkedIn um, link in my uh, blog description or on YouTube um, so it should be accessible um, hopefully this all made sense um, it's a little bit complicated just to wrap up in my opinion server side is not the answer to the vast majority it's the answer to the minority of testing um, situations you come across Client side is still the way I'd go with everything if I could. Um, from a performance aspect, target is so, so quick on um, at loading. It has borderline no impact. Um, security, I don't see it to be a concern. Um, it's only when you have complex tests. If you start to move server side with too much stuff, your developers will be over the moon. They may love that and that's great. But there is massive value in a marketing team, a mildly technical marketing team running tests, especially when you come to personalization, you're just changing probably copy. Um, so to have both definitely um, is uh, it's a huge advantage. It definitely is you know, uh, more in the arsenal. Um, so there isn't a right or wrong. It is definitely a hybrid approach um, that I would advise. But thank you very much for uh, listening and there will be follow-up videos on this, so thank you.